last week, uh, we are watching together about this video, understanding the immune system in one video, and then uh, for looking at it uh, in detail about the immune system, especially about uh, what, what type of the immune cells are there in the blood or lymphatic system, we are going to watch this video together about, yeah. So please refer this video, Understanding the Cell of the Immune System. After watching this video, you got some idea about the immune system. So yeah, actually this whole uh, contents are already mentioned in previous and current video. So I'm gonna quickly look at this uh, slide. So uh, you guys know about uh, non-specific origin defense. This is called innate immunity. Yeah, first defense line, right? And then, so very quickly they can react yeah, within 12 hours according to this according to this uh, dimension within 12 hours the innate immunity activity, right? So regarding mast cell, complement, NK cell, dendritic cell, or phagocyte means macrophage neutrophil. And then over time, so specifically we need some B, B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte, which is called adaptive immunity. Adaptive immunity is they can target specific uh, antigen, so which is called specific adaptive defense. So you can, you can imagine when you implant your biomaterial in your body, the first defense is from the innate immune cell, so mostly from the macrophage and neutrophil. And then next, when your, cell, your body can recognize this material is non-self, and then they start to produce antigen, antibody, yeah, which is called adaptive immunity. So you have to think about how your material can overcome this innate, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Yes, and then if we look at the B cell more detail, the B cell also called plasma cell when they are infiltrated the tissue because they are producing antibody, right? So once this naive B cell, when they interact the antigen X, and then their number is going up, especially serum antibody titer means the number is going up, and then after a few weeks later, when they kill overly, yeah, they have only memory B cell. And then your antigen, they are affected once again, and then they this memory B cell, they can react. So they quickly and then uh, incorporately, they can produce large amount of the antibody. So this is the, their phenotype. Yeah. And then people yeah, name it the B-cell immunity as a humoral immunity, the T-cell immunity, cell-mediated immunity. So this humoral immunity is from the uh, B-cell, and then specifically antigen and antibody system. And then this cell immunity, cell-mediated immunity, which is regarding T cell, so as you know, helper T cell, the toxic T cell, especially this, the toxic T cell, CD8 cell, they can kill those cell. And then this CD4 helper T cell, they can interact with activate macrophage or neutrophil, and then uh, they cannot kill the cell itself, but they can boost macrophage and neutrophil this is the system, and then they can kill and phagocyto microbes. And then uh, pre today video, they mentioned about the hematopoietic stem cell. So they have a lot of uh, subtype of the cell in the blood, but also you have to remember the, how much of the percentage of each cell line. So they have many the different category, how you uh, quantify the contents of the cell, immune cell in the blood. So they have two categories. So let's see, this is a 
whole blood, right? And from the whole blood, uh, they have platelet and plasma com component. And then RBC, and eosinophil and neutrophil. And then, except this one, there are another mononuclear cell, which means when cells have mononuclear, only single nuclear, they mention PB MCs. MCs. Yeah. Peripheral blood mononuclear cell. And then this mononuclear cell, uh, myelo cell, and then monocyte, macrophage, dendritic cell, and T cell. And then lymphatic cell, B cell, NK cell, T cell. Right? So when you look at the percentage of the PBMC, monocyte around 20%, lymphocyte 70 90%. From the lymphocyte, a major part is you can name it the lymphocyte CD3 plus cell. Yeah, like this. And then when they CD3 plus and the 4 plus, which means helper T cell, this is around yeah, this 50% of the CD3 plus cell. CDS cell, around 30%. Yeah. And then total B cell, yeah, this amount. So uh, T cell is CD plus cell, and the B cell is another. So when you imagine, when you meet the, your blood, especially the mononuclear cell, most of the cell is lymphocyte. And then from the lymphocyte, around uh, this over the half percent is total T cell. And then maybe around small fraction, five to 10% is B cell, okay? So you should understand this category. So T cell 70%, B cell 15%, NK cell, another type of lymphocyte is five to 10%. And then other thing is dendritic cell and stem cell. So as a innate immune system, monocyte, maybe they can be a major player in a mononuclear cell, but as an adaptive immune system, the lymphocyte, especially T cell, and then among them, CD4 plus cell is major. So you can catch this idea how much of the content are there. And then people are asking, and what is the main, uh, major component in the whole blood for, for regulating immune system? That one can be answered from this slide. So yeah, as you, you already watch it, the MHC2 class, they can react CD4 plus cell, helper T cell, and then MHC1 class, CDS cell. So one multiply eight, equal eight. Four multiply two, equal eight. And yeah, you can catch this idea. Two, four, one, eight. So why are they important? So MHC2 class is only uh, appear in antigen presenting cell. So this MHC2 class, right down here, uh, so you can understand the difference between MHC1 class and 2 class. Maybe MHC sequence, this one, but uh, MHC2 class present antigen 2 CD4 cell. And then one class present antigen to CD8 cell. So most important thing is that this CD MHC class 1 found on all surface of nuclear cell, which means if you give this CD8 T cell to the wrong MHC1 class, you will be dead. Yeah. Or by yourself, you can say that you are infected by by virus, and then automatically you have to give them card. I'm wrong person. I'm already dead. And then you can give some signal to CD8 cell, and then CD8 cell can kill you. Yeah. So this is MSC class one. So class one matching is very important. And the class two only appear in antigen present cell and activate T cell. So antigen protein cell, T cell is mostly from the dendritic cell. They capture the antigen, and then this dendritic cell, they can give to CD4 cell, CD4 T cell, say, please help me, 
help our bio system. And then this CD4 cell, they can activate and boosting other uh, innate immune system. Also, this can be done by activated T cell. So most important thing is that MSC2 class is only detected in antigen protein cell and activated T cell, but while MSC class one, they should be all, all appeared in this all cell, okay? So, so this is, so let's say MSC one class from all cell. So once the CD8 cytotoxic T cell, they recognize MSC one and then, oh, this is good. And then they just go next. But when they feel, oh, this MSC one class is not matched and then they start to kill. Okay, killing the infected cell. Okay, and then helper T cell, they react to MSC2 class. They once uh, they are activated by antigen protein cell, and then this antigen protein cell they have MSC2 class, and then from MSC2 class it can be regarded as some kind of delivery carrier. The delivery carrier they can uh, capture the antigen and then give it to the CD4 cell. And then they produce cytokine and activate macrophage, start inflammation, and then other T and B cell, also they are proliferate and differentiated. And then this regulatory T lymphocyte is another subtype of T cell, yeah, helper T cell, cytopsy T cell, and also this T cell also called T lac regulation of abbreviation. T leg cell, they sometimes they depress, suppress the lymphatic immune system because uh, when they are over activated, this B cell and T cell, uh, some guy have to control. So this is some kind of control guy. So yeah, this, as you know, hematopoid stem cell they, um, most of the fraction is a monocyte, and the monocyte, when they in the blood, they are suspended, they are floating. But once they infiltrate in the tissue, and then they can adhere. They can attach certain ECM, and then called macrophage. And then they engulf microbe, biops, or other yeah, pathogen. And then when you think about uh, this, yeah, also, during early development, it is hematopoietic stem cell. They can differentiate the blood and then other kind of tissue as well. So we just only focus on this lecture about this: how the monocyte are produced mostly from the bone marrow, and then they circulate the blood, and then when they are recruited from the cytokine or chemokine, they penetrate this endothelial cell, blood vessel, and then jump to the tissue of interest. And then they activate as a macrophage and then capture the microbes. So yeah, yeah let's think about the uh, immune system. So first, a uh, timetable immune system. Neutrophil and monocyte, they are first line of defense. Arise in the bone marrow, circulate the blood, recruited in the tissue side of infection or injury, and then where they eliminate infection, pathogen, clear that tissue, and repair the damage. The first line is neutrophil monocyte. You should remember. And here, they mention they also should clear that tissue. Not only the pathogen, but also that tissue also should be cleared. So some, somehow, if you highly Unregulate the neutrophil monocyte very short time, or this can be good. But prolonged neutrophil monocyte activation, not good. And the second, the naive lymphocyte, the rise in bone marrow, or thymus, home to the secondary lympho lymphoid organs, such as lymph node, spleen, and spleen, where they become activated by antigen, which can be uh, projected by the antigen protein cell, dendritic cell, and then differentiate into affected lymphocyte. So what is affected lymphocyte? T cell, B cell, and then T regulation cell. So when this naive lymphocyte, when they are activated by antigen from the dendritic cell, and then they are activated. So in previous uh, video, 
they mentioned from the lymphatic system, antigen should be transferred to the lymph node to activate this kind of lymph naive lymphocyte. Also, this naive lymphocyte also in your blood, or sometimes in your tissue, or a small fraction. And the third, infected lymphocyte that develop in secondary lymphoid organs migrate into tissue site of infection where they participate in microbe defense. Memory lymphocyte migrate between blood, secondary lymphoid organ, and normal or infected tissue. So after activated, they migrate the tissue of interest. And then somehow the, they can maintain the memory, yeah, memory cell. So this is some first line of defense. This circulating neutrophil monocyte, once they are recruited from the chemokine, uh, they are infiltrated in tissue and then they engulf the microbiomes. And then when the antigen, they are uh, projected by the antigen projecting cell, dendritic the cell, they go through this lymphatic system or blood and then they come to this secondary uh, lymph lymphoid organs like spleen and other organ, and then they activate naive, t naive cell to T cell, activate T cell and B cell. And then this activate T cell and B cell, now, now they can ready to go to infected tissue, and then they start their own node. Yeah. So, yeah, this is how they recruited the tissue. So, leukocyte, uh, leukocyte means that white blood cell. The white blood cell is except the red blood cell. So, leukocyte, uh, including all kind of neutrophil, monocyte, and lymphocyte. So, if you look at the leukocyte, you can imagine all kind of inactive cell and other type of immune cell. Anyhow, when they suspended in the blood, and then they are rolling this endothelial cell, the blood vessel wall, and then they can capture this um, integrin, they are captured, and then they can penetrate this endothelial cell and then go to the site of interest. So how they know where they penetrate it from this macrophage or neutrophil? They secrete cytokine, TNF alpha, interleukin 1, and chemokine. Chemokine means attraction. So when they produce this uh, cytokine or chemokine, uh, this uh, integral ligand, they change. So when they are changed, this leukocyte, including T cell, B cell, monocyte, neutrophil, they are captured. And then they feel, oh, this is a site I have to penetrate. And then this endothelial cell a little bit loose from this cell cell interaction and then they can penetrate. And then they reach this uh, site of interest where they have to play their role. Okay? So, yeah, you, and you, know, you have to think about this idea and then how you, when you are a um, biomaterial, they are implanted in your subcutaneous or some bone, all kind of the system is similar to happen from through the blood vessel. Yeah. And then uh, from this leukocyte, uh, except the RBC, all kind of cell, white blood cell, this PBMCs uh, actually is a subtype of the leukocyte. So you can say that PBMC or PBMC are leukocytes, but all leukocytes, not PBMCs. Because when you look at this one, yeah, this whole blood, these two, including uh, RBC and PBMCs, right? So, yeah. Yes. So yeah, we are finishing the that uh, immune system, so overall 
summary. So now we are looking at how you analyze it. So yeah, for this lecture, so previous one kind of background, and then we have to think, when you implant your material, or when you are injured, what is your main first defensive line? This violet color, neutrophil. Yeah. Most of the maybe 50 or 60 percent of your blood have content neutrophil. Yeah. And then other one is monocyte and infiltrated macrophage. And then other like fibroblast endothelial cell. So in native immune system, they are major dominant in early time point. So neutrophil and then monocyte here, early time point, and then when they are infiltrated in the tissue, become the macrophage, and then other fibroblast endothelial cell, they can react. So this neutrophil, monocyte, and macrophage, they can be regulated by the T cell, helper T cell, right? And then this fibroblast endothelial cell, they can be uh, regulated by B cell. So this is some their time point and the oxygen availability originally 100%, but when they're injured, they feel hypoxia condition. But there is why to break through the hypoxia condition, like high RS condition is very important to accelerate the tissue regeneration. The people are asking, Oxygen level is low, but why we treat the ACE2 to the cell? Because uh, actually it's not easy to 100% mimic the low oxygen condition. Actually, low oxygen condition is correct, but what happened in low oxygen condition? In low oxygen condition, they produce a lot of reactive oxygen species. So to mimic the reactive oxygen species, we treat ACE2. So it's a little bit, uh, not 100% directly mimic this oxygen, low oxygen level. So low oxygen level, you just put your cell to the hypoxia chamber, this is the low oxygen level. But this is not 100% mimic the oxygen less condition. So the final outcome is oxygen less condition is high amount of reactive oxygen species, ROS. There is why, so you have to treat the cell in vitro, ACE2, hydrogen peroxide, to, to mimic this condition. Yeah, this is already yeah, re regarded, uh, mentioned in the previous video. So anyhow, this is some, uh, we, want, we once look at the innate immune cell, recognized non-cell. So this is called PRR, yeah. pathogen, I mean, pattern recognized receptor. So you have to remember pattern recognized receptor. So your immune cell, they can recognize pattern, especially in a type immune system. Let's say this macrophage, uh, they, how they recognize the pathogen? Only from their appearance. So the pattern recognition receptor, they have many subtypes, but you just remember this TLR, TOLAC receptor. TOLAC receptor is a subtype of the uh, pathogen recognized receptor, and then they recognize the pathogen out of appearance. Sometimes from the cell membrane, sometimes inside of the endosome. Okay? So you have to remember the TLR that can be uh, detected in cell membrane as well as this endosome. So when they uh, recognize pathogen, they are activated and then they can produce a lot of cytokine. So there are many subtypes. So TLR can be recognized the PAMP or DAMP. What is the PAMP? Pathogen associated aided molecular patterns. DAMP means damage associated molecular patterns. So as you follow the name, pathogen means bacteria or virus. Okay? So how your TLR recognize bacteria? From their 
most outer component, LPS, peptidoglycan, glycolipid, lipoprotein. Those are a major component of the cell world and bacteria world. And then how they recognize virus? Single strand RNA. Virus have single strand RNA. And then envelope protein. This all related some component of the bacteria or virus is called PAMS. The virus are PAMS. PAMS means the dead cell body of your cell. So mention here biglycan, S100 protein, and fibrin again, all kind of is related to your own cell component. When your cell are dead, or some are necrocyte, or some are damaged, they are secreting their own component. This, this is called them. So these PAMs and DAMs, they are, are, they are the target of the pattern recognizing receptor. Okay? So there are many subtypes, TLR, TLR receptor, NLR, RLR, but you should focus on TLR. Okay? So this petrolecal receptor, where, which kind of cell they can recognize this one, PAM, PAM, DAMs, NK cell, dendrite cell, cell, macrophage, neutrophil. Dendrite cell, antinepolitic cell, they capture the antigen. Antigen means bacteria, virus, or your cell component <coughs> that can be included. NK cell also, they should kill the cell. And how they recognize that they are this PAM, PAM, DAMs through this theater. Neutrophil macrophage, how they are activated from this theater. Okay? So once again, yeah, this pathogen, they have PAMPs, recognize this APC macrophage, a poly PMM, and then the APC also, they can deliver their antigen, which means one of the PAMP component to the T cell to activate them. And then this uh, damp signal from your uh, dead cell, when they are injured, when they are damaged, they produce the dams, which means their own component. And then these dams can capture by another theater from the, this APC, macrophage, and PMM. And then also this can be happen. So this is some, yeah, dam is from the danger signal, which means your cell is sick, or this should be cleaned. And then stranger means enemy is bonded, I have to kill, okay? So PAMS and DAMS regulation is very important as a biomaterial scientist. But not many people know about this concept. So yeah, this is some, um, so now you can understand all kind of dying cell that can produce a DAMP signaling, DAMP of this parent, and then they, which can be engulfed by the dendritic cell, macrophage neutrophil, and then from the cell membrane or, or inside of endosome, after uptaking, this macrophage neutrophil, they can in activate the, or secrete this kind of inflammatory signal. So PAMS yeah, and DAMS, um, sometimes MEMS, microorganism associated with the pattern. They are all uh, captured by pattern recognizing receptor allow immune cells to recognize and protect tissue from various harmful stimuli from your danger signal or stranger signal. And then, it's good, first. But somehow, they are inappropriate activation. They can make severe autoimmune disease, like lupus, or bacteria-related bacteria sepsis, inflammatory bowel disease, psoriasis, MS, Atherosclerosis, RA. Okay? Those are related to this long signal from the damp and PEM, which means when they're activated, it's okay. But they should know when they start. But when they didn't know, this kind of whole disease can start. So, yeah, this is another uh, figure. So, virus or self nuclear acid from the damp signal. Virus from the outside your stranger, when they engulf, 
Okay. And then inside of this endosome also there are TLR receptor, seven and nine. I will tell you detail. And then nine capture the DNA, seven capture the RNA, and then they when they recognize, oh, this is virus from the TLR seven. This is some dead body from your TNA DNA from TNA nine, and then they activate this inflammatory signal, especially NF kappa B signaling, and then they produce a lot of cytokine. So this is the whole summary. You should uh, memorize it. TLR have many subtypes, but all you all, all you can remember is three, seven, eight, nine. Nine means DNA. DNA is from damp signaling. Damp signaling is from your dead body, your dead cell. Okay? So your dead cell, yeah, your dead cell can produce, can secrete your damaged DNA, and then they should be captured and cleared. So TR9, they capture the DNA. TR7 and 8, they capture single strain RNA from the virus. Okay? TR3, they capture double strain RNA. Double strain RNA is from your own body. And then other things, TR2, 4, 5, 6, 11, they capture the each specific uh, microbes component like LPS, lipoprotein, and PTG, proteoglycan. And then once you memorize it, uh, this 3, 7, 8, 9, so let's say 9 DNA, 7, uh, 7A, single cell RNA from virus, 3, double cell RNA, they are on the endosomal compartment. Other things on the cell surface. So you can imagine virus, they are always transfected, right? So they should be detected from the inside. Yeah. So there's why the DNA and RNA component, they should be recognized inside of the cell. But other things, they should be recognized from the outside of cell, cell membrane. Anyhow, uh, whether they are outside or inside, they activate NF kappa B signaling and they release inflammatory signal. Yeah. Also in DTR9, I mentioned from the self, your dead cell, but sometimes bacteria also they have when they have DNA, yeah, we can capture this. So TR9, 7, and 3. Here are 3. Uh, 3. This is from the inside of the cell. And then other 1, 2, 6, 4, 5, 11 from the outside. So anyhow, there are two components that you have to recognize it. Yeah, virus. Yeah, like this. Virus is from double strand RNA. It depends on the virus, right? Yeah. yeah sorry, so a single strand RNA, a virus can produce double strain or single strain, both of them, right? So this can be captured by TRI7, 3, and 7, and 9. And then your MR, mRNA, a single strand RNA, also they can be released from your cell when they are dead. So they can be captured. This TRI7 and 8. Yeah, self and non-self. Hmm. Okay. Say how you uh, evaluate. So we have this HEC blue TRI9 cell. HEC cell is kidney cancer cell line. They are easily transfected by the certain plant Certain, how can I say? Transfected by plasmid. Yeah, certain plasmid. So this hex cell, originally human kidney cancer cell, but they are transfected by TRA9 plasmid. And then this hex cell, they can uh, model of the TRA9 engineer cell, which can have a lot of TRA receptor. Where? Inside of the endosome, not the outside, right? TR9 should be in the endosome, right? 
So there are many human and mouse or another TLR cell, but we have human TLR9 cell. So here, when they, uh, just imagine TLR4 or 9, when they capture the appropriate the component, they are react, and then this hex cell, they are uh, engineered to produce SCA, SCAP as a final uh, product pro producer after signal, uh, activating NF-kappa B signaling. And then this amount of SEAP, they can be detected by quantity blue. And then final color change measured by optical image or optical density measurement. So from this color change, you can assume how much of the NF-kappa B signaling happened from your cell. Okay. So regardless of TR4, TR9, any kind of cell, this is the same system. Oh, it's very low quality of the something. Yeah, I will update it. Oh my God. TLR. Excel SCAP TLR9 Yeah, so uh, each cell line have specific their own target So TLR9, this is some, uh, um, some fraction of the DNA So ODN 2006 O6 is component of DNA, so they only react with TLR9 cell. So in case of TLR4, they can react with LPS. TLR3, poly-IC. TLR2, PAM3, CSK4. TLR7 and 8, CR097. Anyhow, we have TLR9, 7, 8, 3, and 2, and 4. 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. Nine. So, and also we have each this kind of uh, target component we have. So, when you uh, culture them with the over the concentration of specific uh, their target component, in case of this ODN is DNA, they can capture by TR9, and then they can produce a lot of SCAP. This SCAP that can be color chain from your another component of solution, and then you can read optical density from 655. Yeah. They have a lot of DNA component, but I we bought this ODN 2006, which can produce high amount of this SCAP. Yeah. And here, yeah, as I mentioned, TR 2, 3, 4, and 9 we have. Yeah. TR 4, LPS, they are react. TR 3, double strand RNA, mostly from the virus. 8 and 9, single strand RNA. Yeah. And DNA and self. So, yeah. We have this kind of TR cell. So, if we want to investigate innate immune reaction from your biomaterial, let's say your nanoparticle, and TLR cell, capture them together under LPS. TLR4 cell, LPS, con LPS condition, you can imagine without your, your nanoparticle, how this LPS can be captured by the TLR4 cell and then activate nf kappa B signaling. Then you can assume the uh, activation of the inactive immune system. Okay. So yeah, as you know, the macrophage they are activated and then produce a lot of cytokine. 
this is another type of the immune system, an innative system. So, and then the first line is called M1, inflammatory phenotype. And, and then, after that, over time, after three or three days, they should be chained to the M2, regenerative phenotype. So, this naive macrophage, once they activate it, always M1. And then they kill the bacteria, cytotoxic, hepatosis, phagocytosis, anything have, they have to do. And then clearing of debris. And then they should change the M2 to secrete the beta VGF to produce angiogenesis by fibroblast influx and ECM remodeling. So quick phenotype change from M1 and M2 is very important. When M1 is prolonged, it's not good for your, your tissue injury or your biomaterial. So biomaterial scientists, they want to check how their biomaterial, they can quickly change the M1 to M2. You can find many M1 and M2 marker in the paper. Actually, there are many markers. So M1, interleukin 1, TNF-alpha-6, 12, 12, 12, 10, 2 is, uh, sorry, yeah, 10 is low. Yeah, 2 is interleukin 10. So this is M1 dominant first, and then later should be M2. And, and, and then M1 and M2 is not independently they have low. They can also interact with each other. Yeah. So this TNF-alpha, 10, 14, they also react to the M2. And this M2 also react to the M1 through this cytokine. So this M1 marker, like INOS, 1-beta, MCP1, and TNF-alpha, M2 marker is CD2006, 206, YM1, and RGN1. So you can find many paper how they how the people look at the M1 and M2, and then they, you can do Western blood or F and mRNA level checking gene expression, real time PCR, and then as well as cytokine release or some another final byproduct from the M1 and M2 cell. So how we analyze M1 and M2? We have two cell line, low cell, mouse macrophage. This is already macrophage, so they can attach tissue plate. But THP1 cell, human monocyte, suspended cell. And then you should uh, activate this THP1 cell using certain uh, chemical like PMA. And then they start to attach on the tissue, on the plate. And then this M1, uh, this mouse, low cell and THP1 cell, they are activated or boost, boosted by LPS to M1, PMA like boosting, PHA also boosting. And then you can culture this low cell THP1 cell under this condition using your biomaterial. On the your biomaterial or extraction or nanoparticle together and then M1 and M2 checking using PCR, Western, FACS, ICC, Bioprofit, and any kind of thing you can check. So this is an example of the how the people look at the M1, M2 phase type change. So this is a Nature Material paper recently published, maybe two years ago. How the sp spatial confinement downside the inflammatory response of macrophage. They are using low cell and then activate by LPS. And let's see. So they have two different things. One is unconfined, means the cell can spread naturally. Confined means they are restricted. They cannot spread naturally, they are restricted. And then this unconfined and confined. Unconfined and confined, only response gene from the low cell under LPS activation not much of a change, 1 to 0 0.5, 0 0.8. But late response genes, INOS, 1 beta, 6, 0, 9, interleukin 6, are severely changed. So three hours, no change, but after six hours of activation, this unconfined, they are highly expressed of this late responsive M1 marker, but confined, somehow, they are down-regulated. 
okay? And then in 2D condition, and 3D condition as well, this uh, maybe 10 micrometer size, they are confined in 3D structure, but when they are not confined, also similar lead response gene are in small pore, they are down-regulated. So that is why, uh, as a biomolecular scientist, how you manipulate the pore side is very important to regulate the innate immune system, especially this macrophage. And then these other things, when you want to look at is other like how they regulate the H dot activity, you can look at this paper. Anyhow, all this kind of M1, but sometimes, depending on time point, some can uh, regard it, some of them is early response more, and then some of them late response. But it's also hours range, not the day range. So to mimic this kind of system, uh, maybe th this is now it done by, by Ruby, as far as I know. A uh, gold, yeah, you are, you are doing this one. So you have non-treated one or micro-channel, right? So this micro-channel one, they have very poor structure. So when you implant this material in subcutaneous, this is some neutrophil after one day later. Neutrophil is in the immune system, first line of defense, they interact, they are captured by your material. After one day, we collect the sample and analyze it. So the, this is a netosis, another uh, phenotype of the neutrophil. High amount of netosis is high amount, high innative immune response from neutrophil. But in microchannel, somehow they are less. How? The neutrophil, they are spread more. This is an unconfined environment. But when they are confined physically, they are not, they are, cannot produce much of the, this uh, activating phenotype. Also, when you, when you look at the one week after later implantation, we collect the, our biomaterial, the check their M1 and M2 marker. So non-confined microchannel one have more M2, less M1, okay? So we can use this concept, microchannel one, somehow they down-regulate innate immune cell, including neutrophil and macrophage, and then this is good for tissue and regeneration. So we published in biomaterial to this year after gathering this concept. So to regulate the immune system, not only cytokine, but also your uh, material surface, morphology, architecture, or some ions, they can also regulate the uh, innate immune cell. This is a recent finding. Now how the them signaling, they are modulated. Yeah. Today I have to finish this lecture, so just give me a few minutes. 10 minutes, I will finish. This is from the yeah, Camiums and then Duke groups. So nuclear actually scavenging microfiber mesh inhibit trauma-induced inflammation and thrombosis. And why they kept capturing the nuclear acid? Nuclear acid, you know, when your cells are damaged, they release nuclear acid, DNA or RNA. They can also activate damp. They are regarded as a damp signaling, danger, and then captured by TRI receptor of macrophage neutrophil, and then activate innate immune system. So we want to inhibit this innate immune system through damp signaling. And then for that, when we capture this nuclear acid, maybe absolute damp signaling amount can be diminished. This is their concept. Let's see the result. They make this fiber. And then this fiber, they are modified like PEI, highly positive charge. So luckily, your uh, nuclear acid, they are highly negative because they have phosphate group. So they are easily captured, scavenged by the positive charge. So when they, this mesh, 
is captured, uh, recorded by PAMAM. Sorry, PAMAM is high positive charge uh, polymer, G3. The PEI also maybe another positive charge polymer. They are using PEI or PAMAM G3. And then mesh is after coating, and the PAMAM G3 is just by themselves. So as you can see, PAMAM C3K94 is, oh, sorry, this is a uh, TLR2, right? LPS TLR4. Poly IC, I uh, forgot, CPG ODN TLR9. Maybe Poly IC is CD uh, TLR8. So when you look at this one, you have to, you have to know. Sorry, let's go back. Yeah, PAM3 uh, PAM, PAM TLR2, uh, Poly IC TLR3. AP TR4, and then what else? 2, 3, 4, 9. So this is, they want to check 2, 4, and that is maybe 3, and 9. Anyhow, so 2, 4, this is a component of the bacteria, but they no change. Untreated, or just bare microfiber mesh after coating with PEI or PAMA, which is highly positive charge polymer, no change of the, this uh, bacteria mediated inflammation. Okay? But in case of nuclear exit, including uh, DNA, RNA, they are, they are, this is the model of the TLR, uh, DNA, RNA. The TLR3 A9. As you, you can see, this mesh group after coating with PEI and PAMA, they are go down. Which means when they are scavenged, when this DNA or RNA, they are scavenged by your biomaterial, cell, each type of cell, especially 3N9, engineered TRR cell, they are less activated. Which means they can have less innate immune activation less inflammation. Okay? How they uh, do this? Yeah, they... So, like this. You have this PAMAM district coated mesh and then you incubate your CPG ODN with one hour and then you gather the superantent and treat the superantent to the TRR 9 engineer cell. And then when your biomaterial captures a certain amount of DNA or RNA, the superintendent have less amount, and then they can act less activation. So this is a, a yes surface area. This is their uh, sterile uh, viability. So direct culture your maybe TLR cell under this, this kind of concentration. In this time, uh, without any uh, activation, just TLR cell and then PEI concentration, PAM G3 concentration, somehow their toxicity, yeah, but this surface, surface, surface area means this is a zero time incubation. 2.9 is one time incubation. Two time incubation, three time incubation. So there is no change of cell viability. Only NF kappa B secretion activation is decreased. When you show them, people are asking, maybe this is from the death of your cell, not from the decrease of the activation. So they prove no cell viability change of TLR engineer cell but this, uh, when they are their absolute amount of the TLR9 activation is decreased. And then they finally gather the human damp from the sonication or from the doxycycline uh, treatment they can produce necrotic cell, epoxy cell under this, uh, they own produce damp molecule. 
no means without PI mesh, PI conjugated mesh, Parmam G3 only positive charge polymer. It's, it, this is nanoparticle. Little bit changed, but when they are scavenged by your biomaterial, the TR4, TR9 activation, they can be decreased. I think it's wrong. See, this is not TNR4, maybe TNR8. Yeah, because TNR4 is only activated by LPS, not from the damp signaling. Maybe something wrong about this. So TNR8 and 9, this damp signaling have DNA, RNA. So TNR8, RNA, 9, DNA. So they are using two different type of cell, TLR cell, and then they are uh, using two different components of the damp by themselves. And then yeah, they are checking this one, and then over time, well, one time treatment, two time treatment, three time treatment, they are go down consequently. And then they are final product of the uh, NF-kappa B signaling is the TNF-alpha. So TNF-alpha, this is from the not TLR cell, this is from the low cell maybe, or their primary culture macrophage. ABC is cell line, DF is their another uh, primary cell, and then they prove their concept, TNF alpha amount is decreasing under this PI mesh condition, under the sonication damp. Mouse sonication means they are using low cell. So, 3, 9 is a, a damp signaling, and then TRA4 is PEMP signaling. So when you look at the TRA4 and 3, 9, you have to capture the concept. So let's see, under this PEMP signaling, also uh, this PI mesh somehow, they capture this PEMP, and then they can downregulate. And then finally, they, their goal is how they make this kind of, when the damp signaling hap, uh, happening a lot, in case when you transplant heart, kidney, or lung, they can produce a lot of damp. So when they produce a lot of damp, it's not good. So when you transplant the heart, somehow they are damaged from your uh, donor tissue, donor body. So when they transplanted yourself, they have many damp molecules. So when you transplant them, when you put your mesh, they can scavenge the DNA. This damp contained heart graph, they make some kind of scar, but when they are damp depleted from your mesh, no scar. And then clotting time also very much diminished. When you look at this. So yeah, and you can refer many other literature regarding damp signaling, Google it, you know, most is from the Duke group and then Cam Newton's group. Now they are uh, very deeply investigating this damp, how they modulate damp and PEMP signaling from the biomaterial. And then lastly, yeah, this is the last paper I want to share. This is some cell stem cell paper. They want to regulate the T cell, inactive immune cell. So from the MSC, stem cell. The stem cell induce immune regulation involve fast ligand, fast made T cell apoptosis. So for your for understanding this paper, uh, I lectured two weeks. So let's try to imagine. Systemic infusion of bone marrow stem cell is therapeutic benefit for various autoimmune disease. As you know, when you inject the stem cell in your blood, it's very good. Decrease the immune autoimmune disease. But the mechanism is poorly understood. Here we show that in mice, sy systemic infusion of bone marrow stem cell induced transient T cell apoptosis. T cell death via fast ligand dependent fast pathway. Fast is some kind of uh, self uh, bomb bombing signaling. When you activate fast, which means you are going to die. 
and self bombing signaling and could ameliorate mis diminish the disease phenotype in fevery one related systemic sclerosis and then dextran sulfate uh, colitis but fast cell minus minus means no fast ligand BMST did not induce T cell apoptosis and could not ameliorate SS cell colitis, which means fast ligand is very important. Yeah. Mechanistic analysis revealed that fast regulated monocyte chemotactic protein 1 secretion by bone marrow stem cell, liquid T cell for fast cell related apoptosis. Trigger macrophage to produce high level of TG beta which in turn led to the upregulation of CD4, CD24, what is that? CD4 T-cell, right? CD4 T-cell, and then simultaneously CD25, box P3 is T-regulation cell. Another subtype of T-cell, CD4 cell, CDA cell, CD-regulation cell. And ultimately immune tolerance. CD-regulation cell is later immune tolerance. This, there, this data therefore demonstrate previously unrecognized mechanism, how MSC injection is good for immune autoimmune disease. So it's very complicated, but anyhow, you just try to understand. CD3 plus T cell is pan T cell, right? CD4 includes CD4 and CD8. CD4 plus T cell, helper T cell, and then regulation T cell. CD8 plus cell, a toxic T cell. T regulation cell, another subtype of CD4, CD4, 25, FOX P3 positive. Okay? And the macrophage is CD11B or F480 plus. And then anexin V plus, 7A D plus is anexin VI staining, which is apoptotic cell. So you should just remember this. Now let's look at, try to understand. So they inject bone marrow stem cell and then collect, collect the sample. One hour later, three days later. And then they check CD3 plus T cell, pan T cell. What happened? Uh, just BMSC, somehow they go down. Uh, fast plus uh, this BMSC. And then, so just you look at red and blue. When they inject this bone marrow stem cell, Original phenotype is they go down. But their bare when bone marrow MSC, they, they remove the fast L ligand. And then they maintain CD3 plus T cell, no change. But they again give the fast L ligand, fast L ligand of the bone marrow stem cell, they go down. What does it mean? So when you inject bone marrow stem cell, total T cell number decreases transiently, and then because of the FS fast L ligand. This red one is no fast L ligand. This green one, they reinforcedly add fast L ligand, intentionally, go down. The fast L ligand is working. And then, what is the underlying mechanism? CD3 plus T cell, dead F26 cell fraction increase. So, this stem cell can induce more apoptotic T cell. Okay? You got it? And then they check. This is a peripheral blood mononuclear cell. And then they also collect bone marrow mononuclear cell from the bone marrow, from the your blood. Also in the blood, CD, pan CD plus T cell number decrease because of fast L ligand. Also, a factor 6 cell number increase in bone marrow. Really, they confirm using tunnel assay, the bone marrow inject and stem cell injected group, they have many uh, dead, dead T cell, dead cell in the bone marrow. And then here, they just as a mechanism study, they use. Uh, Bone marrow stem cell without no treatment, stem cell treatment again go up, but when they neutralize fast cell ligand using neutralizing antibody, this bone marrow stem cell they have a fast L ligand, but when they neutralize it, the level 
A pump T cell go down. Also from the ICC go down. And then what's the underlying mechanism? Through cas pi 3, cas pi 8, and cas pi 9 inhibitor. When they inhibit it, all kind of dead cell number go down. So from the apoptotic condition. So they mention MSC, they have fast cell ligand. The fast cell ligand, they react fast over the activated T cell. When the fast cell ligand activate fast, this activated T cell go to apoptosis. And then the T cell are debris, they have debris, and then this debris can be detected by an action V7 AD cell. Okay? So now you can get some knowledge how you understand this cell stem cell paper. And that is some many, actually, if you just imagine M1 and M2, but M2 have they very sub, a lot of subtypes, detail. M2, A, B, C, D, E, F, something like that. So as a biomedical scientist, they do not favor to name it M1 and M2. So just we have to say M1-like cell, M2-like cell. So one more time, please try to understand this last figure. Also, CD, yeah. And then here, bone marrow stem cell, okay, they have fast cell ligand. And then somehow, bone marrow stem cell, we exclude the fast cell ligand using siRNA. Previously, we are using neutralizing antibody, which means this stem cell has fast cell ligand, but with fast cell ligand, they are covered by the FSL, FASL antibody. So no more interaction between FAS and FASL. But here, they, we make some cell which cannot produce FASL. And then, also, without FASL, no go down, no cell death, no CD3 plus T cell death, okay? And then from the peripheral blood, also bone marrow blood, same happen. And then this CD4, CD25, this what is it? From the T cell, T regulation cell, uh, immune tolerance cell, they are more produced, okay? But more producing amount is decreased when, they, when we remove the fast cell ligand from the stem cell. Yeah, and then they using another type of cell, this GRD stem cell, they don't have fast cell ligand, but they reinforcedly uh, make the fast cell ligand in the stem cell. And then also this T leg cell number go up. From the T leg cell, T cell beta in plasma, this T cell beta is from the T regulation cell, they have more produced. Okay? And then they confirm T cell fraction, any other, they when they are dead, they should be cleared by the macrophage. CD11 B cell is a macrophage uh, cell type, so they find T cell fragment that can be incorporated by macrophage. So CD11 B cell number, they go up, but from inhibitor, they go down. T cell beta in plasma go up. T regular cell is go up. So they mentioned that when stem cells are injected in the blood, they activate fast through the fast cell ligand of the cell membrane, and then they kill the activated T cell through the apoptosis. And then they make T cell debris like this. And then this can be engulfed by macrophage, and then they produce T cell beta to translate the naive T cell to CD4 T regulation cell to depress the immune system. This T regulation cell that can depress CD4, CD8 activity. Yeah, for immune tolerance. So in here they using normal BMSC and then MCP1 is a kind of uh, Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, anyhow, certain this line, maybe CD4, T, 
maybe maybe regarding TJ beta. Anyhow, if you look at this paper, you can understand. Yes. End of lecture. So anyhow, they are uh, biometric scientists or as a biologist, they try to understand how they regulate the innate immune system, especially to accelerate the regeneration. So T cell you can regulate, or macrophage, neutrophil you, you can regulate through scavenging the DNA or RNA, or even PAM signaling. Okay, thank you.